Hello there. Welcome to Pig Fiddler. Learn to play fiddle. Lesson number eight. And that's the tune we're going to be looking at having a go at playing in this lesson today. First, however, I want to talk a little bit about the way that I keep the violin clean. My own personal technique and also the bow. So we'll have a look at that and then go on and learn the tune that I just played along with the musical notation and we'll play it nice and slowly and then finally we'll see if we can introduce a little bit of a swing rhythm into our playing. So that's where we're going in this lesson today. I just want to answer a question that I've been asked about cleaning the violin. Now I know the way that I clean the violin and I've read all sorts of different ideas. Some people suggest you should use um, scent on the violin strings but I personally uh, when I tried that once I found it was starting to um, any scent that had dropped onto the the varnish of the violin was starting to strip it off so I stopped using that technique then I heard about someone using cork well that just didn't work for me either to be honest it just didn't seem to be a, a, a satisfactory method but I'm sure it works for some people with the bow of course when when you're using the, the violin a lot you may want to apply plenty of um, rosin onto the bow hair. Try not to touch the hair if you can. I know it's impossible sometimes because if you've got youngsters running around the house they tend to grab things. They always grab the, the bow hair. I know from experience from grandchildren. But nevertheless um, the thing is try not to touch the, the bow hair if possible. Now if you apply a lot of rosin like this you will get a fair bit of grip out of it. I, I don't put too much pressure on the bow. I like to keep the bow fairly slack. Not so slack that there's no tension but there, there is not an awful lot. Of, it's not terribly taut like that. I, I like to keep it like that. That means I can apply pressure as and when. And to be honest, I don't often put much rosin onto my bows. I can go a couple of weeks before I put rosin onto a bow. Um, it just depends really how much I use that, that particular bow and that violin. But of course you do get a build-up of rosin around this area here. Now I've played in sessions in Manchester where there have been elderly fiddle players the Irish fiddle players, wonderful, uh, when they were there, who used to have fiddles caked in rosin. And, you know, there was a big white patch all around this area. Terrib terribly wrong, of course, but actually, these guys, they could play the fiddle, and it sounded wonderful. So, you know, whether it matters or not, I don't know. Personally, I like to keep the violin clean. I like to make sure it's it's not covered in rosin, but I do know there are a lot of fiddle players that feel the opposite way, which is fine, because if you get the sound out of it that you want, great. But personally, I like to keep it clean. So, so what I've found, the, the wrong kind of cloth is one, this is a bit grubby now, because I use this for cleaning synthesizers, but it it's got lots of little fluffy bits on it. You don't want that. What you want is a piece of cloth that comes out of the charity bag. In other words, when the charity bag comes around asking for old clothing and things, you usually find lots of clothes get put in there that have been well worn for a few years and they've been washed loads of times. And there's not a lot of fluff that comes off them. They're ideal because I cut those up and use those for cleaning instruments. And yeah, sure, you could just you could just clean the instrument like that. No problem. 
make sure you sort of grip the strings, I certainly do, because it's surprising how much comes off these strings. If you just put your two fingers on the string, you're going to make a horrible sound, but I tend to do that. And it picks up quite a bit of dirt. I, I doubt that you'll see that on the camera, but it certainly picks up some dirt. Now, what I do now, I'm not going to recommend because I'll get about 50 comments in the um, below the video saying, you're doing it all wrong, you shouldn't do it like that. But personally, this is what I've done for the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years. I find I use this on all of my instruments. It's Dr. Is it Dr. Kaiser? I oh, know I think it's just called Kaiser. String Cleaning Extender KDS 100. I buy two bottles of this a year. It costs me about seven or eight pounds either off eBay or Amazon. I tend to use eBay more to be honest. I'm not particularly happy about Amazon. So I use eBay and I buy a couple of bottles of this every year and it does all, all of my instruments, all of the mandolas, the guitars, the banjos, the lot, as well as the fiddles. Now, as I say, this is not everybody's cup of tea, but it works for me. Two ways of doing it, you can either spray it on the instrument, but the better way really is to spray a little bit onto the cloth. And it's a really very mild stuff, this. It, now, you do not want to get this on the playing area. That's where the bow is going to go. You don't really want to disturb that. But you certainly can clean this section where the strings are running above the fingerboard. Okay? Because pulls off a lot of dirt. Now in this instance this is the cheap the cheap glary fiddle that I bought for 30 pound off eBay. So it's not real it's not got a proper ebony um, fingerboard it's just painted hardwood. But it still works alright. Still cleans it up. And if I had more time in this video I'd probably just just go underneath the strings as well. I just thread the um, cloth underneath and just sort of rub on the underside of the strings. But anyway, now what that does, it makes the strings lovely and smooth for playing. So you can, you know, th there's no drag on the strings. Now I do a lot of sliding in my tunes, you've probably noticed. So there's absolutely no drag then once I've cleaned those strings. In other words, my fingers can slide nicely on the strings. It's not quite as noticeable on violin strings, but on guitar strings it is. You really do have to keep them nice and clean to get the slides in. But anyway, that's what I do. As I say, once again, I'm pointing out I do not clean that area with this cleaner. I don't use that on there um, because otherwise it would prevent the the bow from gripping. I just use a, a perfectly clean area of the cloth to wipe there. Now the rest of the body of the violin, yeah I do do tend to try and keep it clean and you've got to be careful of the fret. These, um, these F holes that you don't catch the cloth and tear a chunk off. So just do it gently. Just clean round there. Just pull off the um, the rosin dust, and it just keeps it nice and tidy. Try to avoid moving the bridge, of course, because you've had that position set up, and you don't really want to disturb that if possible. You may get some dust underneath there. It's worth trying to just go under there if you can. And generally, just keeping the thing tidy like that. Um. Apart from that, that's all I tend to do for cleaning. I, I generally do clean up this area here. If this gets dusty, I have a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush, not one that I've used paint in the house or something. I have a brand new paintbrush and I just use that because it's nice and soft and gentle 
to clean out the cracks and crevices and things. It's a good way of keeping the dust off from your instruments. So that's the fiddle. Now the, the bow, I don't tend to use anything on that apart from a clean cloth. So it's just a question of doing that. Not touching the hair of course. I'm just sort of wrapping my fingers around the wooden section of the bow and just gently doing that. And that is a, about as much as I do in terms of cleaning. Um, <clears throat> So I hope that answers those questions anyway that, that, that may have been going through your mind. How often do you rosin the bow? As I say, I used to rosin it quite a lot, particularly when I was first learning. I was probably rosin it every other tune, which is way too much, way too much. But it's not until you get used to handling the instrument and handling the amount of pressure you require on the bow as you're playing that you kind of get used to the idea of when you really do need rosin on the bow sometimes you don't always need it um, because if your bowing technique is good enough you should find that um, you're able to get quite a bit of grip out of the bow but it does help if you've had the bow for quite a few months and you've been playing with it for quite a few months it's, they seem to settle in bows, they seem to um, get impregnated with rosin and after a while you, you hardly have to think about rosin them. Perhaps maybe every three or four days, something like that. But I'm, I guess if you're, a, if you're a top flight professional violinist, yeah, you're going to do it all the time. But someone like me, well, I'm maybe three or four days go by before I think of picking up the rosin. But that's just the way it goes. Okay, just thought I'd give you some of my personal experience about cleaning and how often I rosin the bow. Now, moving on with the uh, tune itself. This tune is called Glarry's Tune um, because this is the second tune that I've composed on this cheap Glarry's violin, 30 pound violin. And um, Basically, I took it from its case this morning and once I tuned it up, I haven't played it since Christmas, once I tuned it up, this tune kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know where, but there we are. So I'm assuming it's come from the violin. Well done. Well composed. And um, anyway, so I thought I would share this tune with you. Um, it's quite an interesting tune because it repeats the main melody a few times. Uh, it plays it on the upper strings and also the lower strings. And um, there is a nice G sharp in part of the tune. We play a G natural for some of the tune and then it goes to a sharpened version. Some of you may prefer to call that G sharp A flat. It's your choice. And also in the B section of the tune, there's a C that's a C natural and then occasionally we put Put play that as a C sharp, so that makes a little bit of variance on the melody and makes keeps it interesting for the listener. So this is the main melody. I'll play through the A section now, so you can hear it. That's the A tune. Let's begin with the pick up notes on the A string. G sharp. Run down to the lower strings. Play the same melody on the lower strings. There's that 
G sharp now on the D string. So that's the A section. Play it one more time, nice and slow. Three, four. Now the B section sounds like this. Okay, so now let's just work through that B section nice and slow, starting with the pickup notes. double stop at the end that's on the A string this is on the E did you notice also the C sharp in there let's just try and point that out again I'll play the B section again here it is Now if you're going to replay the whole tune again, for that last measure, that last bar, instead of playing that, instead of playing that bit, just simply do this. Then go into the whole tune again. Let's try jazzing this tune up. Let's give it a little bit of bounce and rhythm. Right, let's see what we 
we're doing there. Let's get into a mode of doing this. Little tiny bow strokes, all totally wrong of course, but it will serve our purpose. Now we'll play the melody. I'll slow it down. Slow it down further. Why am I doing that? Because even though I know it's terribly wrong to just do tiny little bow strokes, it's getting us to, to get the idea of the rhythm into our sort of playing um, style, as it were. And sometimes it's easier just to do that. Now, when you start to feel more comfortable and you've started to learn the tune and and feel as though you really know it, you can start to do this. those fancy things at the end where you go from the G string, the D string, the A to the E. I always think they're quite fun. You hear those quite a lot with the, the classical sort of music, but they're quite fun. Just finishes it off. Anyway, so there we go. That's something I thought you might enjoy having a go at. Um, it's a brand new tune written today. So I'll post this on YouTube today and uh, see what you think. And um, keep enjoying your fiddle playing. Don't worry too much about whether you get squeaks and scratches. I do it all the time. We all do. The thing is to be able to um, recognise them and try and overcome them next time. That's the thing. We all learn from our mistakes and that's the most important thing to remember. We all learn from our mistakes and you've got to make a lot of mistakes to get better. So have fun with your fiddle playing and have fun with this tune. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.